If the dead of the offseason and there's nothing to talk about. Recently, a lot of people in the NBA Twitter community have been ranking NBA players, and the list have been absolutely garbage. I'm just going to leave it at that. Now, the ranking argument is completely useless because it's honestly very subjective and heavily dependent on what type of players you would want on your team. Because of this, a lot of people hate ranking. But I'm going to be honest, if you're one of those people who hate rankings, you're weird. It's a fun argument and a way to talk ball during the dead of the offseason. For this video, I made a pyramid and a sheet. I broke 100 different NBA players down to 5 major aspects of their games. Scoring, playmaking, defending, rebounding, and postseason play. I used B-Bot Index and the eye test. I rated each one of these players on a scale of 1 to 10 in each of these different aspects and I put them on a pyramid. The reason I made a pyramid is because I feel like each player in each range is interchangeable and can be argued for each side. If you look at my recent videos, you can see that most of them have more views than my subscriber count. We need to change that. Join the family and hit that sub button if you like basketball content. We are on the road to 1,000 subscribers. Enjoy the video. So this is how I rated each of these different attributes. Let's start off with scoring. My biggest thing in this attribute is I don't care about how you're getting your buckets. It's more of a volume thing. For example, Giannis is a 30 point per game scorer, but is he a more talented scorer than a dude like Kyrie? Probably not, but Giannis on my list has a 10, while Kyrie on this list has a 9. This list is more stat orientated, but it's a lot of the eye test too. Cause I feel like to have a good basketball understanding, you need to have a little bit of both. The 10 out of 10 scores were Curry, Dame, KD, Embiid, Giannis, Jokic, Luka, Tatum, and Devin Booker. The biggest shock factor may be a dude like Shea, but I feel like Shea's one hot season and lack of three point volume as a guard isn't enough for me to put him in the 10 out of 10 scores. Next, defense. When it comes to defense, my main thing is versatility. Me personally, if you can hold your own against multiple positions in the NBA, you have a higher rating. On top of that, rim protection and paint deterrence hold a higher value than perimeter defense. Because of this, Rudy Gobert has a 10 because he is a true game changer at the rim. It's hard for me to give a smaller guard like Drew Holiday and Marcus Smart a 10 because perimeter defense isn't worth as much. The 10 out of 10 defenders on my list include Giannis, AD, Jaron Jackson, and Rudy Gobert. I feel like this is fair and nobody was left out, but arguments for different dudes can always be made. Next, we have playmaking. Playmaking is a bit different, but I do have different categories of playmaking built into this. These will involve ball handling skills, passing ability, and gravity as well. And for this and my next thing, rebounding, it's all relative to size. For example, Paul George's score will be raised due to his ability to handle the ball at 6'9", but in this specific category, Jokic has a 10 strictly due to his passing ability and gravity. With that being said, there are only two players with a 10 rating, Nikola Jokic and Trey Young. I understand this may be controversial. I left out dudes like Luka and Tyrese Halliburton, but let me explain. I've come to find Tyrese Halliburton slightly overrated as a passer. A lot of his assists are systematic, and he doesn't use his playmaking to create advantages as often as the other good playmakers in the NBA. Elite playmaking is opening up teammates through coverage pulls, anticipating rotations, and manipulating defense with eyes and head fakes. There are only two guys who I feel like do this at the best of the best level. Keep in mind, a 10 out of 10 score is one of one level playmaking, or any other thing on this list. Luka, he just has a very high usage rate, and I feel like a lot of his assists are drive and kick or create and kick, which is not a bad thing, I just don't think it's a 10. Next we got rebounding. Like playmaking, this is relative to size and position. Prime Westbrook would get a 10, no question. Stephen Curry and LaMelo Ball have sevens on this list, tied with dudes like Laurie and Porzingis. Is Curry really the same level as those seven foot unicorns when it comes to rebounding? No, probably not. But Curry is 6'3", and those guys are 7 foot, so it just makes sense. But for the top guys, there's not much to be said about these dudes. These dudes are absolute horses on the glass, offensively and defensively. This list includes AD, Gobert, Giannis, Sabonis, and Jokic. Capella had a case for this, as he's a former rebounding champ, and Embiid has had really dominant years on the glass, but I think these other dudes are just above them. Lastly, we got the postseason play. This indicates which players step up in the playoffs and which ones step back. This was kind of the more difficult one to rank. For example, LeBron James has four rings. Just that alone to go to any bad play he's ever had in the playoffs. Automatic 10. But this pushes his rating so high that he's ranked higher on the list than players that he's not better than no more at the age of 38. Because of this, this ranking has a smaller pool on my final pyramid than the other four positions. Also, if you are a perennial playoff player, meaning that you have loads of playoff experience under your belt, your score will be benefited from that even if you have poor playoff play. For example, Paul George has made the playoffs 10 times in his career, which is a lot. So even though he's known to drop as a performer in the playoffs and has no rings, he is still a 6. 
This is more of a can you be the best player on a championship team and for the role players, do you step up or do you fall out? There's a lot of factors, so instead of me telling you the 10s, I'm going to tell you the notable scores. The 10s are Jokic, Curry, LeBron, and Kawhi. Jimmy Butler has a 9. Shea, he has a 5 because he's never made the playoffs as the player he has become. Halliburton is a 5 because of the same reason as Shea. And even though Joel Embiid is one of my favorite players, he's a 5 because of his constant playoff drop year after year after year. Dudes like Jamal Murray and Ant are 9 because they literally transform their games and become different players in the playoffs. And James Harden has a 5. Young players who haven't shown much and haven't been able to even lead their teams to being close to a playoff spot are really low. Paolo, Jalen Green, and Alpern Sangoon all have really bad scores. If you disagree with any of these or want to look at the entire sheet yourself, I will have a link in the description in the pinned comment for every single score. And if you disagree with me on anything, feel free to comment, hit me up on Twitter, and let me know because this is 100 players. And I don't know everybody's play style at the back of my hand. Now, let's get into the actual pyramid. Boom, this is it. Let me know what y'all think in the comments. Hit me up. Let's talk about it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I will go more into depth, but I kind of did that throughout the video. So just make sure you like, comment, subscribe, because I'm out, man. Peace.